Which you uh, have framed. I have framed that. Okay, <laughs> I have framed that. That's one of the three big comic book publishers on the planet had us on the back. Um, and Andrew had written the review. Mark Miller follows us and tweets us, which is amazing. Um, and when I found two hidden peanut M&Ms still in the bag during the Arrow Marathon. Well, I think that's... Everything else can just take a backseat to that. I think that's that's fantastic. Fair enough, fair enough. What about you, Saxon? What were your highlights? Well, you see, that's the thing. For me, my highlights kind of more revolve around my own personal life more than anything else. Because, like, a, a lot of people have said, oh, yeah, Doctor Who, the day of the Doctor. Mm. And, and yeah, 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 it was. And, and movies like Thor, the Dark World and, and all that sort of jip. And Celebration Europe, naturally. Mm-hmm. Uh, going to Dublin Comic Con. Going to Dice. You know I mean, all those things were great and nerdy. But for me... Um, there was a YouTube kind of series I was following um, called GTA V O'Clock mm-hmm. or GTA 5 O'Clock uh, that sort of, you know, broke down different trailers and gave us all the new news leading up to Guns Row 5 coming out. And I was tweeting them like, man, I wasn't expecting to get a shout out on the show, but I was just tweeting them like saying all my random theories and stuff. And I got mentioned in one episode. And my name came up on the screen, and I took a print screen of it and uploaded it to YouTube, or uploaded it to Facebook and everything. I thought it was amazing. Okay. Like, Stephen McCullough has text, or tweeted us in with his theories and blah, blah, blah. And I was going, yes! Yes! Yeah. I got mentioned on YouTube, despite the fact I have a channel. Um, uh, let me see what else. Uh, I got my first tooth removed this year, or oh, last year. Okay. I got a wisdom tooth pulled out of the back of my head, right. which was class. Uh, I got more eye surgery done, uh-huh. so that was pretty cool too. Uh, Heroes and Legends, of course, back in February. That was fantastic. That was a great wee event there down at uh, the Odyssey in Belfast. Uh, yeah, I, I met two of my, I suppose, childhood heroes. Uh, one was Matt Irv- Irv- Irvine, mm-hmm. I believe it's pronounced. I met him last January there. Uh, uh, the guy who was responsible for a lot of the props and stuff on Doctor Who back in the 70s. He also built K9. Right, yeah. uh, and he was also a uh, judge and a technical advisor on Robot Wars. And speaking of Robot Wars, I also met Pete Redmond. Lovely Twice. bloke. Twice. Pete Redmond's a lovely bloke. I've met him now. Uh, and he is a lovely bloke. And his family's very nice as well. Uh, and we've met him twice. I interviewed him once at Heroes and Legends because he was there w- uh, for Mechatrons. Pete's always at the shows. He's such a good guy. Yeah. And then we met him again at Dublin Comic Con. And he had Dator, his robot from Robot Wars, with him. Uh, fair enough. It is battered and beaten up and has been closed sitting in the garden shed for years. You, I have never seen anybody fanboy out like you fanboy out at Dator. I thought it was insane. Awesome. I really thought it was insane. It bordered on embarrassing. Awesome, yeah. but embarrassing. Hey, do you know what Dator's Irish for? No. Warrior. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Stick that in your pipe and smoke. And I got some Dator fur. Yes, you did. I got some yes, Dator fur. <laughs> and it's hanging on my wall Which as we speak. So dirty, but anyway. Yeah, I got some red and black Dator fur. <laughs> and it's insane because look, it's it's actually damaged and stuff as well. Because if you look at it, you can see where it's melted and burned in one of the battles. And I have that, and that's on my wall on display right now. That's insane. That's brilliant. So yeah, uh, I think that's about it. I did my subscribers video last year as well, Total mm-hmm. Reboot, the big three part epic that practically killed me. I uh, shot it in August, and it was online by mid September. So some going there. Uh, but yeah, those were my kind of really big nerdy moments of the year. What about yourself? Um, one of the biggest moments was Batman and Superman being announced yeah. at SDCC. Um, I was actually out uh, for my brother-in-law's birthday that night, um, and I knew SDCC was coming along. And I was hearing news that there's something big coming, and I was sitting in the Chinese restaurant with my phone. Yeah. And everybody was singing happy birthday and eating Chinese, and I was like, oh my god! And they were all like, what? And I was like, Batman and Superman! Yeah. And they were like, can you focus on something? I was like, <laughs> so that was amazing uh, that, that was big and I don't care what anybody says I everything I'm hearing about it I love I just think what DC are doing is fantastic yeah um, and you know they, they, DC can't make movies now without being compared to Marvel unfortunately no. Marvel or fortunately I love the Marvel movies So, but Marvel did it and no matter what DC do now it's going to be compared to that Yeah. but you know I don't care I love Man of Steel I thought as a universe building movie it was incredible um, because it set up everything that Marvel has set up over, what, six or eight movies. Yeah. It set it all up in one movie. And it was brilliantly done. Uh, so I think that's... Oh, it was hinted at in one movie. I think the the uh, the Batman, the world's finest movie. Mm-hmm. It will be the big setup now. It'll be the next step. Yeah, but because it started on Krypton and it showed, like, the other planets that they tried to, you know, um, 
colonize. Colonize. Yeah. Uh, you know, so you got the idea that there's a big universe out there with life teeming around it. Yeah. Uh, you know, you saw Lack Core, you saw Wayne Enterprises. You know, there was hints of Star Labs, there was hints of this and that. And I just thought it did it all. And I know what you mean. Yeah, it'd be yeah. the next next movie. Do, but do you think we'll have a big sort of crossovery moment in the world's finest movie, or yeah. perhaps a Justice League movie, where uh, you have Hal Jordan or uh, what's his face. John Stewart. John Stewart, or whoever it's going to be, you know, being taken out to Oa, and you'll have Zod's ship, you know, scanning all the different planets. Uh, yeah, I, I like that idea. Flying past, you know. Where maybe jumps in and you see events at different... Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, but I, I thought Superman... I loved Man of Steel. I thought Man of Steel was fantastic. And yeah. It was one of my highlights of the year, um, because somebody had finally done a DC movie properly again. Mm. Uh, and as much as I love the Batman movies, I had a lot of issues with them. I didn't really have any issues with Superman. I thought it was fantastic. Um, what else? Stephen King, the return of Stephen King this year. He had Joyland, which was such a, a beautiful, wonderful, non-Stephen King book. He, he sat down, he wrote it. It was, a, it was a, a, a murder story and a ghost story. And it was just such a... It's a short, quick read. The end of it, I actually because I don't have time to read very much I bought the audiobook of it and I was listening to it in the bus I cried at the end of it I Seriously? actually cried at the end of it I was on the bus it was so embarrassing Unreal. Luckily, there was nobody else in the bus I was <laughs> genuine man tears at the end of it um, Unreal. it was such a powerful powerful end of the book uh, and then he did it again Doctor, Doctor Sleep, Sleep yes. which was fantastic um, you know and, and a big issue that I have with Stephen King I've been a Stephen King fan nearly for as long as I've been reading books and I, I love Stephen King he just doesn't know how to end stories no and if, with Doctor Sleep, he gives the Torrance family an ending that is just wonderful. Because even the ending of The Shining was a bit... Mm, yeah. Uh, but he does it with this. And he creates a character called Abra, who I really hope we see again, because she's such a wonderful character. And his son, Joe Hill, wrote Nosferatu this year, which is one of the creepiest and one of the best pulp horror movies you will ever, or horror books you will ever, ever read. Um, and, of course, Hill wrapped up Lock and Key this year, which was... Without a doubt, one of the best comic book series of all time. It's incredible. Um, and I've been reading a lot of Hill stuff, uh, and he's writing The Wraith at the minute, which is kind of a prequel comic uh, to Nosferatu, and it's just it's just class. So to see Stephen King back and his son to be carrying on the legacy is just fantastic. Um, Evil Dead, the Evil Dead remake, was one of my highlights. I didn't want to watch it, and no. I, I loved the hell out of it. I just thought it was great. Well, that's really good. thought it was class. <laughs> um, Peter Capaldi as yes, the Yes, being announced as the Doctor. Yeah. Fantastic. Fanta- yeah, I mean, I, I, I've said this before, and I think you agree, a bold move, because they've, they've been going for the younger, sexier doctors, yeah. and they've cast Although, somebody... Although, I, I, I really like how they've kind of explained that away with the day of the Doctor. Because mm-hmm. obviously, with his regenerations, after the war Doctor, he became Christopher Eccleston. Yeah. And then after that, even younger again, David Tant. After that, super young Matt Smith. And then now he's back to Peter Capaldi, uh, the older man again, the the 55-year-old that we had originally with William Hartnell. Uh, I like, it's kind of explained in The Day of the Doctor, there's that sort of scene where uh, uh, John Hurt's like sort of going off on one saying like, timey, why me? You know, like, why do you always talk like children? You know, and they sort of look at, they give him this look that they hate him. That's the sort of thing the Doctor doesn't want to look old anymore. He doesn't want to look anything like John Hurt anymore because he he hates the war Doctor. He he always wants to go for the young, youthful, uh, eccentric, which is ultimately what he became with Matt Smith. But obviously because that the 11th Doctor, uh, 13th Incarnation, whatever you want to call it, finally got some closure at the end of the day of the Doctor with what he did in the Time War. You know, it's okay for him to have an older appearance again, which is what happened and he became Peter Capaldi. But... Outside of that kind of mad explanation within the continuity and the context of the story, I think Capaldi is an excellent choice yeah, for the next Doctor. Yeah. I think he's brilliant. And he's the perfect actor to take the show into the next 50 years. Yeah, No, I agree. Uh, but but on, in real-world application, it was a bold move because a big part of Doctor Who over the last few years has been the fan girl, The sex appeal. The teen, yeah. teeny boppers who, who think David Tennant's sexy and who think... And, you know... Like no harm to Peter Capaldi, I'm sure he's a sexy man, but he's not. <laughs> but, you know, but they're not going for that. Do you know what I mean? Teenage girls yeah. aren't going to be going. Oh my god, Peter Capaldi! They went for an actor. They went for someone who's going to really do. You know, who's going to be mm. the more traditional doctor. I think that was it was a it was a very ballsy move, and I'm looking forward. I can't wait to see what it does come August. Yeah. Um. What else? What else? Paul Rudd is Ant Man. Paul Rudd is Ant Man. I'm such a big Paul Rudd fan, and yeah. I I've been. Waiting for this for years. He he will become a household name. This, the, of course he will. You know he will. Ghostbusters three is on the horizon. I don't care what anybody yeah. says. He will be in Ghostbusters three. And I think his casting that man's going to just. I I really think 
Especially because Ant Man's one of those. He's such a surreal hero. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's oh hey look a guy who can shrink down in size and get really big in size. Yeah. You know it's such a, a weird and sort of cookie kind of par that I think only Paul Rudd could could do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and really like I think Ant Man is going to become one of those superheroes that is as loved as Thor and as loved as Iron Man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Much to the shock of people watching it. Yeah. Because they're going to be like, like really? Well, I just watched that was so good. Yeah. Um. And because Edgar Wright's directing, Edgar Wright is one of the most exciting directors out there right now. I, yeah. I love everything Edgar Wright does. Uh, I just can't wait to see what he does. He's going to give it such a unique visual spin, yeah. something that I think is severely lacking from Marvel movies. Mm-hmm. Because while we've had great directors and we've had some great movies, we haven't had a particular unique visual style to them. Yeah. Not even with the Avengers. No, that's, that's, that's fair. That's you know? Fair. So I really think we're, we're getting a visionary when we get Edgar Wright as Ant- Ant- directing Ant-Man. And of course, with Ant-Man, you saw the test footage from Comic-Con a few years back. Yeah, brilliant. That's insane. He, he jumps up, he gets incredibly tiny, runs up the barrel of a gun and kicks a guy in the face. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, no, class. Uh, we're getting a two and a half hour movie of that with Paul Rudd as the guy. Exactly. One of my favourite comedy actors and directed by Edgar Wright, the man that made Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, yep. uh, The World's End. Again, somebody else highly involved with comedy. Yeah. And as I said earlier, people involved with comedy make the best acting, the best drama. And I really think we're going to, we're in for a treat mm-hmm. with Ant Man next year. But yeah. you really are. I, th- I think, I definitely think it's going to be one of the big films of next year. Easily. Honestly, nobody's, we'll see it come. People like us will see it come because we know. But yeah. I think the general cinematic audience this time next year are going to be like, what the hell was that? That movie was Unreal. completely out of nowhere. It was amazing. It was fantastic. And that, I think that's what's going on. And Edgar Wright and Paul Rudd, it's just, it seems like nerdy heaven. Oh, of course it will. Um, and, and we're talking about this. Ant-Man's going to be one of the biggest movies of 2015. That's the same year that Avengers 2 comes out. Yes. That's the same and year Star the next Wars. Bond movie comes yeah. out. Uh-huh. And everything else under yeah, the sun. But Ant-Man's so the one I can't wait. Ant-Man will be the say. heavy hitter. Uh, right, what else, what else, what else, what else? Winning um, the best Irish comic book related website with the ICA. Which, and which Irish I comic deafened book. people with my celebrations. <laughs> yeah. on uh, but that was, that, was a bit, that was a big thing for us. You know, and we, do, we are very, very grateful to the guys at ICA and, and for everybody that voted for us as well. That was, that was a great honour oh, yes. um, for us. Uh, Brian's death and family guy now I know that they pulled the blanket out but it was a big moment it It was was a a big big moment moment, and I was surprised at how shocked I was by what happened in Mm -hmm. in a cartoon the the killing of a cartoon dog actually kind of traumatised me Uh, so that was surprising and then of course they did the that was one of my low points of the year was when they just went no sorry it actually didn't really happen at all uh, so I don't like that. That that I didn't like. But the 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 initial impact of it was a highlight of the that year. and the fact I don't know if you saw have you seen any of the recent episodes? No. Like in the because they didn't just do the whole thing where it's one episode he died and then the very next episode they brought him back. There was one episode in between, and at the start of those two episodes, at the start of the one where they brought him back and the one in between, he's replaced in the opening titles with yeah. the other dog, and it's such a jarring thing to see. I cause funny my brother had put images of it, and he just wrote this. This is. BS. Yeah. And it was a picture of the other dog in the brand. In the opening titles, yeah. Um, so, yeah. What else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Um, I think that's near enough everything. Um, on a personal note for both of us, uh, Ghostbusters artist um, Dan Schnoning doing the, 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 the image, the picture of the two of us uh-huh. uh, as IDW Universe Ghostbusters. Insane. For a Christmas present was was pretty damn epic. Insane. It was was really cool. Honestly, my jaw just went on the floor the second I saw it. Yeah. It was craziness. And the thing is, like you tagged you uploaded it to Facebook and tagged me on Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. So I woke up Christmas Eve morning and my phone was doing that weird beepy thing it does when it gets a notification from Facebook. And I looked at it, I clicked on it, and again, as I said, my jaw hit the floor. Mm-hmm. That's me. It's an IDW Ghostbuster. Yeah, that's insane. I knew you would like that. I knew you that's like that. insane. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean Dan and Eric. You know everybody that works in the Ghostbusters comic. Again, Ghostbusters was part of my top last year on the, on the review of the year show. This year again, it's consistently brilliant. They're doing great, great stuff. And God knows, I cannot wait to see what's coming next year because or this year yeah. because we are now in the fiftieth anniversary or the thirtieth anniversary. Is of course, but yes, there's yeah, anniversary of Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Um, and I'm being told here to tell you David Tennant is beyond sexy. Well, there you go. There you are. Uh, Peter Capaldi apparently is not. Yes. Um, but yeah, so uh, that 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 was one of the, the big big things of the year. Um, letdowns of the year, everything we've already talked about. Brands coming back from the dead, celebrations, real lack of news. Um, this is one that we didn't talk about. SDCC getting a Doctor Who 50th anniversary trailer. 
that nobody else got to see. I I think that was, I think that was actually better that we didn't get to see a trailer okay. until later on because obviously the first real kind of I don't know inkling of the 50th anniversary we got was that epic 50 years trailer. 